Hey, what's up guys? Uh, the wait is over. Thank you for being patient. Uh, this is our behind the scenes video for preparing for Bagger Racing League and also behind the scenes while we're out at the racetrack and kind of get a feel for where our minds are at and uh, what we have to do to prepare. Uh, right now we're putting a chain kit on, so just taking off this front drive sprocket, getting rid of the belt and putting a chain on from Low Rock Customs. We're doing this because belts are for pants. Not for bikes. Not motorcycles. <laughs> Even though all of our other bikes have belts. They don't matter like that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that. 100% committed now. Alright, now I don't know what I'm doing, so. YouTube! <laughs> We uh, had some worn out belts on our bikes and we did not want to throw belts back on. So uh, we wanted to reach out and see if we could find a good chain kit. And I stumbled across Low Brows and contacted them and seeing if they were uh, interested in sponsoring us. And we were also looking at their um, Tsunami Roof Fenders. And they were kind enough to sponsor us with both of those. Yeah, you know, it um, delivers power to the ground a lot easier and uh, just feels better when you ride. When you're uh, coming out of a corner, you know, you really feel it. Um, it's also great when you're changing tires on the track. It's a lot easier to take off your tire without having to worry about a belt. It chains a lot easier and um, just a great product overall. And I say everyone should go out and get one. I need to go get a chain flare tool because it doesn't have uh, the pin like a dirt bike. So you put this plate on, the O-rings, put these O-rings on first, yeah they're falling off. And you put this on, it's called your master link, and then you get a flare, and it flares these ends out as you tighten it down over this. So right now I'm just trying to figure out a chain tensioner for my brother's bike, and then I'll have to do the same on mine. Um, so the best thing I come out with is since it rubs on this passenger peg and the rules say no frame modifications, I don't know if that means that, but that's not gonna be the reason I'm not gonna be allowed to race. So I came up with a different idea um, cause I was originally just gonna cut that and put the tensioner at the bottom. But uh, instead I'm gonna mount a tensioner up here. I'm gonna make a tensioner and uh, mounts it off of this belt guard. So yeah, it should be fun. That's uh, tomorrow's project. Uh, installing the chain kit was uh, relatively straightforward. Um, well, for me, Carson struggled a little bit yeah, because well, yeah. he was trying to put it on a different wheel that did uh, did not end up fitting on my bike. But when you put it on a, the wheel it's supposed to go on, it works phenomen phenomenally. I can't say that word. <laughs> phenomenally. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, but different. <laughs> so I figured out the spacer I need. Uh, space out the hub from the swing arm uh, it's a little off but I think it'll still be good once I set up the axle but uh, now that I figured that out this uh, wheel is now hitting my shock so I got to cut down my shock bolt or change out my sprocket bolts like a flush allen but um, or Torx I think I'm just gonna end up cutting the shock here in a second or that shock bolt so should be good People that say race bikes or race cars are nice all the way down to the bolts. Wow. What are you talking about? That's nice. Because <laughs> it's functional. Okay. <laughs> now put your pads in. And then we gotta make sure your chain's gonna line up. That's oh. why I feel it's pretty good. Fucking farm tech racing. <laughs> <laughs> Not really working. I've spent a lot of, a lot of money on uh, machining and bearings and a lot of, a lot of dumb stuff right now. I'm trying to get this to work, so I have 17 ready. So yeah. Coming to my buddy shop today, um, Joe he ordered me a tire for this. Uh, so we mounted that up, got it all balanced. <laughs> Brandon over there is being Brandon, you know, as usual. And um, check the spacers again. So all we got to do now is I got the primary back on. Um, I'm gonna throw the chain on that, and then 
tighten everything down, make sure the wheel still spins freely, and if everything works out, then I'll have a 17. If not, then uh, well, either way, I'll have a 17 by the end of the weekend. So. So the wheel that I originally planned on putting on, um, we tried for a couple days, Brian helped me out a lot, we're trying to get it on there. And um, when it came down to it, the, it was, I think it was Wednesday night, right? Um, yeah, Wednesday or Thursday night before BRL. I just had to pull the plug on trying to put that wheel on it. Uh, called up Tony at Tucker Speed, um, one of our big sponsors, and ran down to his shop and he uh, luckily had a wheel and hooked me up with the Dyna wheel, the same one that uh, my brother has. So I was pretty excited to get that on. We have matching setups, so I was super thankful for uh, Tony hooking me up. Yeah. Uh, right now I'm trying to put a 17 inch Dyna wheel on my 05 Sportster. Don't know if it will work. Eventually I wanted to go to 17s. And Bagger Racing League's rules are still not very clear. But he's um, trying to one-up me over here, you know? So, yeah. Eventually I wanted 17s. So I'm gonna try and make it happen. Yeah. What are you trying to do? I was trying to steal some bolts so I could mock up my wheel. But Carson doesn't want me to use his bolts. No, I have more that came with the wheel. So that way he doesn't have to steal the ones off my wheel. I am thinking. So the Dyna axle fits the bearings on the Dyna wheel, but there's too much slop in the spacers from the Sporty, but the Sporty has the right spacers. So, and the Dyna axle is too long, so I don't know if I should get a Dyna axle, cut it, and have it re-threaded, but then I'd still have some slop or if I change out my bearings and have a custom crust lead made and run this 40 box. And spacer. And spacer. So right now I'm pretty excited. Um, struggling with the 17 on the rear, you know, but uh, I'm excited I'm finally doing the dual disc front. So here I got my uh, fork lower that I need, brand new from Harley. Um, so it's pretty nice. We're rolling uh, high class now with these uh, chrome Brembos, you know, because it's got to look fancy out there on the track. Push-ups. Come on, boys, push-ups. I want to give a big shout-out to my dad. Um, everyone that's uh, met him in the last couple months knows him as Pops, but uh, he's my dad, Kyle, and he's awesome. I mean, I owe everything to my dad. I uh, couldn't be more happy to have him. And he's also very, very smart. <laughs> Uh, we want to be here without our dad. Uh, he's always supported us in everything that we do. Even our dumb decisions. Even our dumb decisions. Uh, he'll watch and see if we can make something out of it. <laughs> uh, but he's always there for us. And uh, he taught us everything about uh, just pushing forward, Never figuring out your problems, and not giving up. And uh, honestly, that helps with so many aspects in life. Um, I couldn't be more grateful for my dad. Uh, he's a great, great guy to have around you, no matter what you're doing. Uh, he can always seem to solve a problem or uh, cheer you up. So, and if you ever need a potato chip bag open, he is the man. He's I'm got not... four arms of steel for, so for days. You gotta watch like... out for him. <laughs> Little cowboy, he knows how to open a bag of chips. <laughs> you know. Please leave. Don't do that. Don't. So, as everyone knows, um, I bought a Ford Econ line to tow the Sportsters around when we go to races. And um, we got our sponsors on there right now, so if anyone wants to sponsor us, I got a giant moving billboard that I drive around every day because it's my uh, daily driver right now. Besides no. My, besides my diamond. <laughs> we, will not, we will not babysit your kids. That yeah. is not what the van is for. <laughs> <laughs> we are not a daycare service, so. <laughs> Unless you got a sports tree you want us to pick up, then we will. Yep, for a fee. <laughs> Uh, being in the pitcher, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, I think there was like 90, 95% of us out there. And at that moment really hit on what 
we had accomplished along with all the other teams and uh like i just got chills just yeah. thinking about it that that was it for me just being out there on the track with some big names out on the track and uh just knowing that we made it and that we were gonna do it and all the hard work is paying off you know a lot of long nights a lot of money but uh definitely be in that picture with everyone else yep there's a uh, something to be said about that that picture is going to go down in history and i'm just proud that we were able to pull it off and keep it together and be there um, it was awesome seeing all the boys from cali who we've been uh, turning it up with out there and uh they were all happy to be at our home track which is it really rode, yeah yeah it's not really our home track yet we rode chuck wall and more still yeah. but eventually we'll get some more time out here at umc but it was great seeing everybody um it's cool knowing what 90 percent of the racers 95 yeah. percent of the racers we know by first and last name just being out there riding with them you know going out to cali all winter and then finally, then finally coming out here it was just great you know they were all so hyped to be out on that track and be out in just Utah and see the best part was seeing them do the drive that we did all winter and they <laughs> just thought it was crazy that we did that so many times in the middle of winter yeah it was uh it was cool seeing them drive the way that we did just I don't know I think it kind of put things in perspective a little bit for them um but, you know, I would do our drive oh, yeah. 10 times over just to go shred with those guys. Because, I mean, they, they ride fast, and there's a great time. I've seen a lot of progression, too. Oh, yeah. Everybody was pushing it. I've seen everybody step up their game. Uh, Tucker Speed is our title sponsor, along with Lowbrow. Um, but Tony uh, really stepped up for us. He went out of his way. He did more than I could ever ask for. He got us a badass garage and let us pit with him. And he's one of the Grand, P Grand Prix garages, so you're right on the start line. Um, this badass being with the whole Tucker team. Um, they're just a great people to be around. Um, I like seeing their teamwork, and it was great to be a part of their team and come together as one um, with our team that we bring. Um, so it was cool being able to work with him and uh, work on bikes side by side right there in the pits. And uh, it's just a cool experience being in there. He's a well-known bike builder. He knows what he's doing. It's just cool being around him. I look up to him in a lot of ways. And uh, it's pretty cool. He uh, hadn't even rode that bike. Got it off the dyno the night before and then just went out and hauled ass and shredded. It took fourth place and got on, a fourth bike place on a bike he never rode. Um, so that was pretty cool. That's awesome. So I think if he uh, rolled that bike longer than five minutes, uh, <laughs> he probably could have got. I want to say second. Him for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone saw our bikes and saw how uh, clean they looked compared to what they used to. It. Yeah, they're not. They're not crackhead. They don't look like it, but they still kind of are. Um, but yeah, Tony hooks it up that with the paint. Um, Thursday morning, I actually had to go and pick the tins up straight from the painter. And uh, it was funny. She was like, don't touch them too long or you'll leave fingerprints. Like, that's how fresh they were. So I loaded them up in the van, took them home, and I uh, called Brandon. I was like, hey, I picked up the tins. And I uh, started putting them on. And I got my bike about 90% down with the tins when he showed up started doing his so. we uh, got peanut tanks from Tucker speed I think they're drag specialties um, they have neat pockets built in so that really helped him because he has a bread loaf tank yeah and so that's, uh, it really helped him bring his knees in um, mine it helped me still a little bit um, I already had a peanut tank but uh, just those knee pockets alone helped out quite a bit and Gives then, you got a half inch yep and then the Tsunami Fenders, we lost weight with those. Those are low-brow, they're aluminum, um, which is nice when you cave them in, you can just bend them right back. And you can take your tires off super easy, yes. since there's nothing in the way. <laughs> uh, but the paint turned out killer. It was cool having matching bikes and have it match with uh, Tony's bike as well. And uh, it just made our bikes look 10 times better. So that was really cool, just because 
We are proud of our bikes, even though um, they do look like crackhead bikes and sometimes. And we're, we're a bunch of goons, but they're not so goonish, <laughs> you know, so it's nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was cool getting those done. Uh, so our buddy Joe, if you didn't get the chance to meet him, he's like our big brother. He's awesome. Um, yeah, he's awesome. He's always there for us. He supported us the whole way through um, in whatever weird adventures or... Whatever uh, we want to do in life, he's right there. Yeah, whatever <laughs> mechanically or unmechanically crazy shit we want to do, Joe is always there. Um, he knows what he's talking about. He uh, does not work on Harleys. He works on our Harleys. <laughs> he does not like it. <laughs> no, he likes, he likes our Harleys. Um, I feel honored to have a friend like Joe. Um, he's always there for us, and, uh, like and we I can ask for a better friend. Yeah, we went through my car, but I don't know, like six or seven times, I think, that day. And um, Joe's taught me a lot in life, and really grateful to have him. So, I don't know if all you guys know this, but uh, at the first round at USBA, um, I ate shit. Um, high sided really hard, and I had been recovering. Um, and BRL, I think, was the first time I had been back on the track yep. since I wrecked. My nerves were pretty racked up. Um, qualifying, I went out and tried to get as much track time as possible since I hadn't been on a bike in almost two months, uh, period couldn't even ride my daily just because of my knee um, so still trying to get used to it and so I stayed out there the full 30 minutes that we had to qualify just trying to get used to the track and started to feel pretty good and they uh, threw the checkered I was the only one out on the track and um, I just saw my head uh, how bad would it suck if I wrecked on the last <laughs> lap and um, that's what he did you yeah wrecked on the last lap that's what I did I, I wrecked on the last lap um, Unfortunately, low-sided, but that's what happens when you quit paying attention. I quit paying attention and relaxed before I was uh, done slowing down, so I relaxed at full speed and just quit thinking, basically. Went down, uh, out into the gravel. Um, I was okay. My suit fared out okay. Helmet didn't hit the ground. I just slid on my ass. Uh, ambulance came and picked me up. I loaded up the bike for them because they didn't really know they're heavy. Uh, they, aren't, they aren't used to Harleys out there quite yet. So I loaded up the bike, um, went back, and before my adrenaline wore it off, um, I just wanted to start working on my bike. So before I even had my race suit off, I just immediately started working on my bike just so I knew I'd get it done and get it fixed before I started uh, getting too sore. Um, I ended up changing out the handlebars, and my front end was tweaked, um, but it didn't seem like the fork tubes were bent. Um, I just uh, loosened up the neck bearings, fork tubes, um, triple clamps, and uh, just straightened up everything. Everything kind of popped back into place. Did a couple of test rides just around the pits and uh, prayed to God that the front wheel wasn't going to lock up on me uh, during the race. first qualifying and um, I was, wasn't riding the best I could have during practice so I was like you know what qualifying is going to be good. I'm going to go out there and um, bike was idling a little high but not, not too bad. We go out there and they sat us on the, the grid forever. I went out a third call and we were sitting there forever and uh, apparently my floats were sticking and it filled my uh, belly pan completely full of fuel. So when I took off on the line, it dumped a bunch of fuel all over the grid. And I took off, I did two laps. Uh, I went one full lap and then the second lap, they were flashing red flags like, oh, someone must have wrecked. Cause I was out there, by, I thought I was riding by myself. I was like, why is no one else out here, you know? And I come back and they were yelling at me and freaking out thinking I dumped oil all over the place. And so they took my uh, tech inspection off, went back and found out it was just my floats were sticking. And uh, they actually asked Brandon, they're like, who is that? Do you know who that guy is? <laughs> 
Nope, I do not. <laughs> I know her. No idea. Matching bikes. Matching um, bikes. Same last name. <laughs> no idea who he is. <laughs> yeah, no idea who I am. But uh, came back and... Um, <laughs> that dude's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that dude's a nerd. Um, floats were just sticking really bad. So I ended up polishing the seat um, with Motul Chrome Polish and a drill and a Q-tip. Shout out. They uh, sponsored us briefly with yep. the use of their demo tube. <laughs> so we... Uh, I think it was Iron Horse. I was next to us. DTF. They, um, they're a sponsor right by them. They let us use their polish so I could clean my seat um, just to get my bike going then I uh, went out for oh wait and our beautiful uh, team manager slash home cook slash girlfriend of uh, me uh, <laughs> went out and uh, got a float needle for Carson yep so he could uh, compete yep so I went and got a new float needle and uh, since I think we're the only ones running carbs yeah I went around to everyone and everyone's like I, I got fuel injection I'm like cool <laughs> like why don't you I'm like I don't want to talk about it. We okay? don't live in the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> Cars for life. Like I still ride a two-stroke. Like I don't know what you guys are talking about. Fuel Car injection or GTFO. <laughs> uh, so actually getting out there and racing, um, I was really nervous, um, just because it's all new to me, and uh, I uh, ended up uh, dropping the clutch and. Uh, Willied up and uh, had to let off the gas, so I got a terrible start, which really sucked. But I got an even worse start because I was laughing at him because he's in front of me, and I see the light drop, and I start going. And then I see him go straight up, and I start laughing. I'm losing on the grid, and every single person passed me because I was laughing at him. I was kind of just stuck in my own little world. I had, like, no one around me. It was great being able to get out there and race, and I just kept telling myself, uh, don't eat shit, don't just, eat shit, don't eat shit, race. don't eat shit. Uh, all I wanted to do was not wreck on pay-per-view. Yeah, uh, so to I accomplished that goal. <laughs> Uh, one of the coolest parts was meeting all the people that came out to the race. Definitely more people from out of state. Than in state, which was kind of weird. Yeah. Major thank yous. Uh, I don't know if that's a word or a phrase. I don't know. But uh, um, to everyone that came out to support the race, you know, uh, there's some people coming from South Dakota. How about yeah, Sturgis? South Dakota, uh, Idaho, Montana, California, Arizona, Texas. So it's just really awesome seeing everybody ride out. And uh, I was probably more excited to meet all them than they were to meet us. Yeah, everyone um, from Instagram that we've seen for years, like, oh, you're so and so, and you're so and so, and like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm a racer. Like, that's awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I, that's my favorite thing is uh, meet new people and uh, see people that you've been following for years, or uh, you see their bikes but you don't know their faces, and be like, oh, that's your bike. And you know Sick. your Instagrams, but you never know who they uh, are. <laughs> Like, yeah, we race, but um, I don't know, we're still average people. And that's what I guess we're trying to get to the people like that. here on YouTube. But just anybody can go out and do this if you uh, put your heart and soul into it. Squeaky. All right, so I'm going to go shred this canyon real quick. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Later.